you guys already have a truck that's very similar, just anybody have any questions about this truck over the, the older, the 2015? I think the only question some a couple guys had talked about was how the regen system actually works. Okay. Were you here yesterday? Were you? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I guess, you know, Start in the that. past we were told wrong. Okay. And, and okay. Uh, they told us you cleared it up yesterday a little bit with them. So. Okay. So I guess we can start in the front. You have a you have a three position switch here for the regen. Um, it's just it's always stays in the middle, but there's basically two functions. There's regen and pivot, which what that does is when you push it when it's running, it will keep it from regening. The only time you'd really want to do that is if there was a reason you couldn't have hot exhaust temperatures. When this thing regens, it gets to be about 1200 degrees of temperature. So say you're parked off the road somewhere and there's tall grass, obviously you don't want 1200 degrees coming out of your truck because you're come back and the truck will be on fire. So you're parked close to vehicles and you don't want to park the side of a vehicle. That, say, say you're down a, a narrow city street and you just don't want this thing going to regen. Go ahead and push that, it won't regen until um, you shut the truck off and restart it and it resets and I go back in. The other function is regen, that's for a stationary regen. So as you guys are driving up and down the road, when this thing gets up to an operating temperature, if it senses enough restriction in the DPF, it should um, automatically regen. And they call it, um, so, as you're going up and down the road, you might notice HET on your dashboard. That's high exhaust temperature. All that means is that it's currently in a regen, nothing wrong. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's just warning you that if you get out of the truck, it might be hot. Um, if you do that a lot and say you make a bunch of short trips and this thing just never completes a regen, you're making you know, 10 EMS calls where it's idling a lot on the scene and you're just not driving a lot. You may get a warning light that says regen needed. When you get that, it means that it hasn't been able to complete a regen on its own and you need to force it. So you can either drive it out on the highway for half hour and force it, or you can bring it back here, park it on the ramp, put it in neutral parking brake, heat your regen light, the thing will ramp up in RPMs and it'll force it through a regen. Um, if say you do that right now, and you get toned out to a call, just get out and hop out in the truck. As soon as you hit the um, transmission shift or the park brake, it'll come back down out of regen and you can go ahead and make your response as you normally do. Um, as you're making that response, it might finish up on its own. You get back and you don't have to do anything else. If you get back and you still have the regen needed light on, go ahead and start again. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. The other part of the emission system is the def fluid. So you have a DEF tank on the back, it holds five gallons of DEF fluid. All that does is spray DEF into the exhaust stream ahead of the DPF, and it, it helps the DPF work. It keeps it from getting clogged up as quickly. Now, there's really nothing you have to do with that system at all other than make sure that there's DEF fluid in it. If the DEF fluid was to go down too low, you'll get a warning and it is say, had to go into like a reduced power mode after after a certain amount of time. That's just all the EPA mandated stuff for the engines. Nothing else you can do. Okay. Um, other switches on here, you have your battery and ignition. When you start this truck, you're gonna get a wait to start light on the top. That's not a glow plug or a grid heater like you have on another truck. That is the multiplex system talking to all the different monitors. So when you first turn it on, there's a computer in the front and there's computers all over the truck that all have to talk to each other. So in that initial startup phase, it's wanting it's wanting to talk to everything and it's wanting a reply back. So go ahead and wait for that wait to start light to go off before you hit the start button. If you get in a hurry and you click it on and you hit start, you might end up getting a check engine light. The reason it's doing that is it doesn't it didn't finish its its boot up phase. Probably not going to hurt anything. Probably keep on going. Next time you start the truck, it should go away. But you want to try to limit that because it's not communicating the way it's supposed to. Other lights, you have your headlight switch, your bright dim light, um, which is for the, the um, lights on the dashboard. 
your ABS diagnostic button is just for mechanics, it's for them diagnosing the ABS. The gauge mode just um, rotates the cluster through our odometer, our meter, all that information. All these other ports are just for the mechanics too, so they can plug in their computers to all the different systems. Your transmission shifter, basically reverse, neutral, and drive. The other function of this has is if you hit the plus and minus arrow at the same time, it's going to give you your transmission fluid level. That's actually the way Allison recommends that you check the transmission fluid. Because if you never notice on a dipstick, there's a hot and a cold, sure. and then you got to have the truck in a certain gear, or you have to have it neutral, and every, every vehicle is different. So if you just push that, it's going to tell you oil level is okay. Or another, or to say oil level low, and it'll give you a quantity of quartz, or oil level high quantity of quartz. The other thing I have to say is if we try this right now, it's going to say invalid because the truck has to be at some sort of operating temperature. It only takes about three or four or five minutes to get it to be where it needs to be. So if you're doing your daily check truck or if you check it once a week, just let it warm up a little bit before you do that. On your VMUX screen, you guys have two of them on this truck. They're, um, they're exactly the same, except for the officer side has a speedometer built into it. Um, you have your E-Master, which just turns all your emergency master lights on. Um, your warning light menu is going to give you just a couple other things, but you normally start on your home menu. Um, you have your apartment lights, your work lights, are the lights down under the bottom of the truck your camera, um, your generator starts. So on this one, I know they said on that one, you have to hit PTO and excite. On this one, you only hit generator start. It does everything it needs to do to get the generator running. To do that, though, you wanna be under 1,000 RPMs. Um, so what I always tell people is if you are if you think you're gonna need this at all and you're also using the pump, go ahead and turn this on before you, as you're putting it in the pump. Reason being is if you say you go out on the scene, you start pulling lines off the truck, you're running this thing over a thousand RPMs to supply pressure to your lines and all of a sudden somebody says, hey, we need some electric. At that point, you can't turn it on without throttling your truck down. Um, obviously, if you have people on lines, that's, a, that's an issue. Uh, the load manager override, this has a load manager on it. So if the alternator can't keep up with the load of the truck, it's going to start shutting down um, non-essential things. A lot of those are emergency lights, stuff like that. Essential would be um, the computer for the truck would be the last thing to get shut down. Because if you shut off the power to the computer for the engine, the engine shuts off. So it's going to start stepping it down. The only reason you really have to override that is, I don't know, say you're on the interstate and you just start losing your emergency lights. You're like, this is bad. You can kick that on problem is eventually you're just going to run out of electric and the truck's going to shut down so it's not going to allow it to do what it wants to do. It should never go into that unless you have a problem with the alternator. So if you notice this thing starting to shut off equipment and get it in for service or something wrong with it. The other menu is your system info. Your warning light, your warning event acknowledgement, what that does is um, say there's a door switch on one of the switches on the back that goes bad. You go to make a call and it's saying the carbon door is open, well, it's closed. Um, so, so you don't have to listen to the, the beep the whole time. Just go to your system info, hit warning event acknowledgement. It will ignore that warning until you restart the truck again. And now if you have another door come open, it will, uh, it will alarm. You have, to, you have to ignore that one too. So it's just one at a time. Voltage info is just giving you information on the voltage. Um, and then diff there's different information about the truck, the same stuff that you're going to have on your dashboard. Um, your auxiliary, again, work lights. And then your auxiliary two, your, your three on, on the left, you have your spotlights, floodlights, and then the scene lights front. The left and right of your um, brow light is a floodlight. The center of it's a floodlight. So if you only want spot on, you can do spot. If you only want flood, 
typically most people just hit scene light front, turns all three at one. Uh, flood lights left, right, and your scene lights are installed with different lights on the back of the truck. Uh, your high idle button, that just ramps it up to about 1100 RPMs. I typically tell people to leave that on if you're going to be on the scene for a long amount of time, especially if you're running stuff like the generator and not the pump, because you got a load on the engine. And if you got a load on the engine and it's at a lower per RPM, it's going to create a lot of extra soot and it's going to clog up your emission system quicker. So the, the biggest um, problem with all new trucks from ambulances, pickup trucks, to fire trucks is idling because of the emission system. They do not like to idle at all. So if you can ramp that up, it makes things stay hotter, burns cleaner. It can act, it, it a continue a regen if it's, if it's in one way you're responding and stuff like that. Any questions on that? Um, this truck has a, um, the condenser is on the radiator. So, and I think your other one's the same way. So you notice the engine fan gets louder when the air conditioner's on. All that's doing is it's pulling extra air through your condenser so the air conditioner works better. If you ever need to make the truck quieter, you don't need the air conditioner, turn that AC switch off, the engine can come up. Other things in here, you can check all your fluids through the engine cover. So you can look to your sight glass for your radiator, your transmission dipstick, oil dipstick, power steering is there. Your winter washer fluid, there's a window down in the bottom of the step where you can see the level there. You can fill it through here. Or if you tilt the cab, there's another fill right in this area too. You can fill it. Questions about anything in here? Nope. Right on your panel, you guys have a foam fill. This fill only fills the tank. It has nothing to do with the foam system. So you can't use it as an adductor. Basically, it's just a, it's a pump that puts foam into your tank so you don't have to climb on the top. If you don't want to use this, the other option is to climb on top of the truck with a foam bucket and dump it directly into the tank. To use it, you have your foam fill hose stored up on the top right there. This goes into your foam pickup here with the cam locks. You hit A, um, which is going to select foam tank A. If you guys had two foam tanks, there would be another button down here that would say B. You only have one. So you push A and then you push fill. When you push the fill, you just push it once. It's going to run for 60 seconds and, or until the foam tank is full. So it, it's connected to your foam level sensor. So as soon as your foam tank gets full, it'll shut off. You're good to go. If you don't fill it within one bucket, it's going to shut off within 60 seconds. Once you get done filling the foam, you want to make sure you get all the foam out of that pump, out of the hose, out of the system. So you want to take an empty five gallon bucket of water, um, put the hose in it, push flush, same thing, it's going to run for 60 seconds. You probably want to do that two or three times. When it's flushing foam, it's just going to dump the water and the foam remnants down onto the ground. Um, they tell you with this, if you're using an AFFF, which is mostly outlawed anyway, you'd want to contain that runoff, but with a Class A foam, it's normally not an issue. Um, if you hold either the flush or the fill, it'll, it'll stay running as long as you hold it. So, any questions on that? Pretty simple. On the panel, this is a newer foam control for you guys. Um, somebody asked yesterday if we could default this to pressure mode. And I looked it up, I don't think we can. It's gonna be defaulted to RPM. So when you come out, first thing, this is gonna be the screen you see. It's gonna be in RPM mode. If you wanna go to pressure mode, you hit your mode button down here and it's gonna to go to pressure right now. It's having an error because the truck's not running. Um, to increase or decrease pressure, you can use your up or down arrows or you can turn your twister knob. Right now, I think this thing's set to turn clockwise up, counterclockwise down that's anybody that's used an older pump that's reverse, that can be changed if that's something that you guys wanted to change. So you can change it to counterclockwise up, clockwise down. Um, this button's an idle button, same as this one. Um, 
you have your menu button here and it's just going to tell you different things about the truck if you want to go into the menu there's another menu button down here you can click and you can change all your presets so you can have two presets for pressure two presets for rpm and once you guys set those presets they're going to show up um, up on the top here where you can just hit a preset button and automatically go directly to 100, say 150 psi and then you can go up and down from there this button here is going to tell you what warning faults you have so right now we have a warning fault for throttle interlock not enabled just because the truck's not running. When you click this, it goes up, I think it's in three PSI increments, up or down. Another thing you might see on this is if this thing drops more than 30 PSI of pressure, say you, say you call for 200 PSI and it just can't keep up. The only reason it wouldn't be able to keep up is either you don't have enough supply or you don't have enough engine. Typically, it's not enough supply. So say you call for 200 and this thing drops below 170. It's going to automatically drop back down to idle. And then it's going to slowly start coming back up. And the reason it's doing that is it's trying to keep you from cavitating the pump. If you're running the pump faster than water coming in, you start pulling air bubbles. Those bubbles go through the impeller and they can crack it's cavitation. So it's going to do that once. If it goes back up, tries to go back up to 200 and can't maintain it, then it's going to go back to idle and it's going to give you a warning. I believe it's just low, low pressure or low intake, something like that. Um, at that point, you want to you want to try to figure out what your supply issue is. You're either pump, pull, you're either either trying to um, pump more water than you're bringing in, or say you're drafting and you're you know, you're running out of water. So that should be the really the only warning you should see. Other than, um, you could see some engine warnings on here. So if you have an over temp, low oil pressure, all those things are gonna show up on here and give you a warning of what's going on. But really the only one that's gonna kill your pump throttle is cavitation. It's gonna protect the pump. Any questions on that? Your foam, foam system. So right now you guys have three presets set. 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3%. You can change these to anything you want. And I left instructions yesterday. There's passwords to get into all this, so not anybody can mess with it. You can set over here three more presets, and you can label all these too. So say you want to do 0.1% for overhaul. You could just call it overhaul. If you want to use 0.5% for a fire attack, you could call it fire attack. That way your AOs don't have to remember, okay, what percentage do I want to use for different scenario. You can just label those presets to whatever you want to call them. First. How do you do that? So, presets? so I left the instructions with them. They said they were going to make some copies. Um, when you go into that, you just hit your menu button, um, calibration configure. It's going to ask you for different, there's a different password for different functions. Okay. You type in that password and then it's going to, um, that screen's going to come up where um, you can actually change the text on all those okay. and then you can change the percentages. So when you first come out to the truck, this is what you're gonna see. So say you wanna do foam 0.1%, click that, and you're gonna get this screen. From this screen, you can change that percentage manually, but before you actually start pumping foam, you gotta hit your power button. You hit your power button, it's going to start that pump and it's going to start injecting foam into your system. Now this is a foam injection pump, it's not an induction. So with a foam inductor, you, you all know you have to have a certain amount of PSI to be able to induct the foam. With an injection, it doesn't matter the PSI. It's going to inject the proper amount of foam for the amount of GPM that you flow to get the proper percentage. That foam is going to go to any of the four lines that are red. They definitely have the little foam symbol on them. Um, when you guys are done with your foam operations, there's nothing you have to flush on the foam system. You will want to flush the line that you were using though. So you want to flush the valve and flush the hose, flush the nozzle. 
all that foam as it dries up is going to gum everything up and you're going to have problems with it. So say you have the front line off, you're flowing foam. When you're done, turn it off, leave that line flow for a minute or two, get all that foam out of there. It's going to make bubbles. Once you stop making bubbles, it should be clean. Any questions on any of that? Pretty simple. Um, the instructions I left off also had some calibration information. So about once a year you should calibrate this. And if you have a flow meter or a pedo gauge where you can pull a line off the truck and say, all right, we're flowing 200 PSI. The instructions will tell you how to use a password you're gonna type in and there's an upper limit and a lower limit. So you can say, we know at our pedo gauge we're flowing 200 and we go out to this and it's gonna, it's gonna give you a number of what it thinks it's flowing. If it says 180 and you know you're flowing 200 because you're pedo, there's an up arrow, you just up it to 200 and it's calibrated. And then you do a low end, you do a, like a 50 PSI and calibrate it there. The same with the foam, you wanna calibrate that once a year on how much foam you're flowing. The way to do that is Again, you use that password, you go into that calibration menu, get a five gallon bucket um, and pump off five gallons of foam. You know that your bucket is five gallons, it's full, you pump it off, it should have. It should say five. If it says 4.5, then it's not reading the amount of foam that it pulled in. You wanna up, up the arrow until it's five. Make sense? Yep. It's another, there's something you wanna do once a year. It should all be calibrated from the factory. Um, other things on the panel, you have an air primer, so this runs off the air system of the truck. There's no time limit like on a regular electric primer. You, want, you don't want to run those too long or they burn up. This you can run as long as you have air. Um, and there's protection valves in there that you won't completely deplete the air system of the truck. But even if you did, if you go below 60 PSI on your brake system, the brakes won't release. It's not like the truck's gonna roll away if you use all your air. Uh, your jump line blowout, all this is is an air, air valve. It flows air through your front jump line piping all the way to the front. That's the best way to clean, clear all the water out of it. So what you wanna do is take the hose, everything off that, point that away from anybody. You know, make sure the chief's not standing in front of the truck. Turn that on, you're gonna blow all the water out of the line. Um, it works better than this front jump line drain, because if you go under here and look at this, this drains here, but that piping goes, it threads its way up to the front. There's low points lower in that pipe than this drain valve. So you're never gonna get the water out of that front jump line unless you blow it out. So it's the best thing, especially in the winter time. It's all under the bottom of the truck. You go out and it's cold, you're gonna end up freezing and cracking. Um, your other truck has the same thing. And your other truck also has an auto drain on it on the low point. I don't know if this one does or not. We can see one over there. Questions on any of that? Under here, there's not a whole lot for you guys to mess with, but you do have a foam tank drain, and then you have your foam tank fill valve. They're right now, they're where they need to be. Um, you guys haven't put any foam in this yet, so the first time you put foam in it, just make sure that this thing's still closed. We've had departments, the first time they fill their foam, they climb on the top of the truck, they dump 30 gallons of foam in it, they get down off the truck and there's 30 gallons of foam on the ground. So, um, just make sure that's closed. foam level gauge, water level gauge, you have a, also another water level gauge up on top that changes colors. I believe it's green and it changes to orange and then red. There's a blue in there too. I forget the sequence of it. But when it goes to, um, when you're at below a quarter tank, it's going to start flashing red. And you're almost out of water. There's one of those on both sides of the truck. Any questions on any of this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We pull it out, 
Hmm? We pulled out and told the cab. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Generator control if you have on your other trucks. Really not much to do back here. You turn it on and off on the front, and then you have all your breaker boxes. Okay. These breakers are just all the 110 breakers for the generator. Anything that's 12 volt is up inside the truck. So all this is gonna be 110. tilting the cab same as any other truck make sure that everything's secure in the cab especially the front officer SCBA seem to get through windshields before. Cool. Uh, this one we couldn't get the tilt yesterday you have so much equipment in here um, tomorrow the person coming out to the training is one of the mechanics and he's going to turn up the pressure on your cab cab lift it's very common when Barbara and Fertz gets to the truck, puts all their equipment in it, the thing that's not, doesn't have enough pressure. So, here, turn it up. As far as the tilt, that you just have to have your battery turned on, the engine turned off, and then your capital controls are reading. Tilt controls in here. You also have a, a lever, which is basically for the manual pump. If the pump goes out, you can crank it up like a jack. And this has a two stage pump on it, so it's going to have a spe one speed it'll go quickly, semi quickly, um, about halfway up. When it gets to the second stage, it slows down. It's just like a two stage piston on a ramp. Here, turn that up tomorrow. It should work fine. When you guys tilt the engine or tilt the cab, there's a safety bar on it. What they want you to do is get that bar engaged and actually put the weight of the cab back down on the bar, get it off the hydraulics, just to ensure that that bar stays engaged. Um, reason being is if you climb under here now and a hydraulic line busts, I think it falls on you. So make sure that that's engaged. As far as checking things under here, you can check most of everything with the, with the door up on the engine, um, doghouse. But obviously you're going to want to check the belts, stuff like that when it's tilted. On the other side, there's a fluid reservoir for your radiator. That is empty. That is supposed to say empty. That's just an overflow uh, Most cars, you know, there's always fluid in it. There's a low and a high. On these newer Cummins engines, that stays empty all the time. The way to check your radiator level is there's a little eyeglass on the top of the radiator. Just make sure that that's green. 
tell you as much. But if you see antifreeze in the overflow, it's probably just there because the engine's warm and it's pushed it in there. As it cools back off, it's going to suck it back in here. So it's not a problem for some reason. And if somebody was to fill it, they're like, oh, that's supposed to have some in it. The worst it's going to do is dump it on the ground. It's going to overflow. So if you notice antifreeze on the ground, you might want to check that first to see if that was overfilled. You have five batteries on here. So there's three here, two on the other side. Your def tank's on the other side. The def fluid on these, it's, it's messy. I, I let most people tilt the cab to tilt to fill it or you end up with that full of the um, steps but I know you guys have a pump so it's probably a little cleaner than the box. Other things on the truck is you have air drains on your air tanks. It's pulling cord here. Pulling fill it. It just does that it doesn't have any water coming out. There's an air dryer built onto it so you shouldn't have any water in your tanks. But it's something good to do at least probably monthly just to get make sure there's no water sitting in your tanks. Um, the water will corrode the tanks and if water gets into the brake system it can cause issues with all that too. So the water is not a good thing in the brakes. Any other questions under here? Um, when you guys lower this down there's there's latches built into these pistons um, there to the clamps. When you hold this down, the cab's gonna seat all the way into that, and then um, hydraulically, these are going to clamp down on the cab. So when you hold this down, you just wanna hold it until you hear those click into place, and it could take anywhere from one to five seconds. If you just wait, if you let go as soon as this thing hits bottom and you don't hear it click, then your cab's not secure. Um, at the least, you might notice the cab bouncing as you're going down the road. You might get an error warning light that your cab's not seated correctly. On the worst, if you stop hard enough, I guess it could come up more likely in an accident. So. I haven't heard it click. Questions on that? That's about it. all I covered. There's not much else in the truck.